What if you put sodium metal in dry water? Will it explode? What is dry water, you may ask? Well, normal water's wet. And yes, water can be wet. Don't get me started on that. If you roll some drops of water in fumed silica, this hydrophobic coating protects the droplet from other water. It can't merge with other drops. But if you just take fumed silica and mix it in a blender with water, it'll form tiny micro droplets of these hydrophobic drops of water. These tiny drops are weird. They flow kind of like a liquid and kind of like a powder. But here's where it gets interesting. What would happen if we put a sodium chunk in the dry water? Now there are inside experiments and outside experiments. I've learned through experience that sodium in water is one of those outside experiments. So let's do this outside. So it's stored in oil here. This is definitely not water. I'm gonna cut off the oxidation on the side. Look how soft this is. I can literally just shape it with my hands here. Okay, so we've got our ball of sodium. Let's see what happens when we put it in the dry water. Okay, three, two, one. Oh no, <laughs> nothing's happening. That's the worst thing that can happen. Oh, there it goes. Now this was interesting and a little unexpected. It didn't explode. I've never seen it just burn like this. What's burning here is the hydrogen gas, so no explosion. But let's try it again just to make sure it's not a fluke. It in. Again, nothing happening. <laughs> when nothing happens, that's the scariest thing because that means you have to walk up to it after and not know if it's gonna explode. Okay, there it goes. Oh! <laughs> okay, something happened that time. <laughs> Normally, sodium metal floats on top of water, but dry water has a lot of trapped air between the drops, so the sodium's actually more dense than the dry water, and so it sinks. So now we have the sodium completely covered by the dry water. That was such a cool explosion. It looks like we have red hot liquid sodium in there. So what happened? Why did it explode this time but not last time? And before we continue, when I'm doing these experiments, I know what you're all thinking. How does he keep his teeth so clean? Thanks to Leif and Wave for sponsoring this video. It's kind of crazy that a toothbrush could still be improved upon at this point, but they really have improved it. Not only does their toothbrush vibrate at 66,000 times per minute, but it also rotates as it vibrates. They put in a motor here that responds to the amount of resistance it encounters when it's brushing, so it doesn't just get stuck in your mouth and stop moving, it can increase the torque. You can even use the app to set your own custom settings for the toothbrush to get it just how you want. I've personally been using the Leif & Wave toothbrush for over six months and I can honestly say it's my favorite toothbrush I've ever used. I've used electric toothbrushes before but this one cleans so much better in a really short amount of time. Because it's vibrating as it's rotating, it pretty much does all the work for you as you move it around. It seriously leaves my teeth with a similar feeling as when I leave the dentist after a professional cleaning. But my favorite thing about it is how it doesn't get dirty after a lot of uses. It uses a non-gap design and even the button uses a sensitive touch design instead of a traditional button to avoid dirt hiding in the creases. The toothbrush head can just pop off the top here so there's nowhere for dirt to hide. Also, it's super easy to charge and the battery lasts a long time. I've seriously only charged it like four times since I've owned it. Also, they're very reasonably priced with easily replaceable toothbrush heads. You can also choose from two metal versions, including stainless steel and aluminum alloy. So if you want cleaner teeth, then check out Leif & Wave by clicking the link in the description. Now let's get back to our experiment. So the first time all that happened was a bunch of fire. Now I'm pretty sure that this would have heated up the water, and when you heat up water, it lowers the surface tension of the water. 
And also we know that our entire chunk of sodium reacted in the first reaction, so all of that sodium hydroxide that came from the sodium metal is now in the water as well. But what if we reduce the surface tension? Well, an easy way to reduce surface tension is just to put some soap on it. So let's see what happens when we put soap on it. Soap greatly reduces surface tension by disrupting the hydrogen bonds between water molecules, especially at the surface. As a result, when we put it on dry water, it just melts it. That's what's happening here is these tiny drops are combining together because they can't stay spherical anymore. Hydrophobicity doesn't work very well when soap is involved. So I'm guessing what happened is we reduced the surface tension enough that in the second reaction there was able to get a lot more liquid water involved with the reaction. But overall the reaction was still a lot more mild in the dry water. But why would that be? Where was this quick firecracker type explosion that we usually see when we put sodium in water? Well, my best guess is that we've reduced the ability for it to create a Coulomb explosion. I've shown in a previous experiment that even in a vacuum where there's no oxygen to react with the hydrogen, sodium still explodes when you drop it in water. Researchers have shown that this is due to a reaction that they've dubbed a Coulomb explosion named after the electrostatic force or the Coulomb force. When sodium drops in water, it heats up to a liquid and almost immediately releases electrons. These electrons and new ions formed repel each other so fast that they form tiny little spikes that accelerate at 10,000 meters per second squared. So this causes a quick electrostatic explosion that's accelerated and turns to fire once the hydrogen reacts and burns. But it seems as though the Coulomb reaction isn't happening here because the tiny little dendrites of sodium metal can't penetrate through these individual tiny little drops. So the drops act like tiny little reaction cells that contain the Coulomb explosion. Before I started, I actually expected the explosion to be worse because the sodium would sink to the bottom of the dry water as opposed to just floating on top but it was actually much less violent than I've normally seen. But even though it didn't explode the first time, I still wouldn't trust it overall to not explode again when I do it. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and we'll see you next time.